Hello and welcome to the Manifestation Origin Series. This series is dedicated to understanding where manifestation actually came from and why it is not a New Age practice. It is a lot more complex than we assume, right? We know that it is derived from various teachings. We are very much aware that it is not a New Age practice. Manifestation has always been a part of various cultures, be it Egypt, be it India, be it Tibet, you name it, every culture has their own version of manifestation. It's just portrayed differently or it is worded differently. That's the only difference. In a lot of cultures, you know, ancient cultures, being able to materialize whatever you think is nothing new. I mean, think about it. If you actually do and are connected to your lineage, you may have heard someone materializing a thought. It could be by using a mantra in Sanskrit. It could be by chanting names of the divine in a different form. But this has been going on for a very long time and it's nothing new, right? In ancient Egypt, hermitism was something through which we understand that they did practice manifestation. Now, I'm not going to be diving a lot more deeper. Otherwise, we're going to be over here for three hours, right? We don't want that. Now, hermitism is basically a mixture of Greek spiritual wisdom and Egyptian. Those to combine. There were seven principles in it, and we're going to be understanding just one for today. In Hermitism, there is something called as the principle of mentalism. Though all is mind, the universe is mental. Thoughts influence the world. The Kabbalan is how I'm assuming you pronounce it as, forgive my pronunciations. That is where we understand that you co-create with the divine. Now you see, it is an emphasis on co-creating with the divine. It is not you creating it. There are various other scriptures that we are going to be diving deep into that are going to explain that to us as well. The principle of mentalism. Basically, your mind holds so much power that what it can think, it can materialize, right? This is why we say, when you work with your subconscious mind, it is 95% more effective than when you work with your conscious mind. Your conscious mind is 5% responsible, while your subconscious mind is 95% responsible. This is why when we listen to subliminals, we see faster results. This is why when we indulge in hypnosis, we receive faster results. But you also see that the mind holds tremendous power. Think about it. Why is it that when we are setting intentions, we are asked to focus on visualizing as well, not just your emotions, but also visualizing? Why is it that we say what you see is what you believe, but what you believe is also what you see? You can literally turn your thoughts into reality due to the power of your mind. And that is understanding that when you are connected to the divine, your subconscious mind is almost like a bridge. Think about it in this way. You are connected to your subconscious mind. The universe is connected to your subconscious mind, right? So what your subconscious mind believes to be true, it materializes it for you. But it is not you who is materializing it. It is the universe helping you materialize it. So you are co-creating. You are not creating it by yourself. Right? In India and Hinduism, we've all heard Om or 
There are different ways of pronouncing it as well. I'm gonna leave it to the professionals because if I start chanting Om, you're gonna be terrified. Trust me, I've had that. Om is a very powerful sound. They say the universe was created through sound before in ancient India. Until they had actually. Mantras hold a very significant power. When used properly, they have the power to materialize your desires. So if sound, what is sound? Sound is pure frequency, right? Frequency, every single thing is vibrating at a certain frequency. What did Nikola Tesla say? If you want to understand the secrets of the universe, you must think in terms of frequency. Everything has a vibration, everything has a frequency. So when you raise your frequency, raising your frequency does not mean that you match the frequency of a desire. Because your soul itself is connected to the source energy. And if you actually have read Bhagavad Gita, it says, that yes, you have the essence of the creator within you, but that does not make you God. You have the essence of God, which means you're 1% of it. You are not the 100% of it. Again, co-creation aspect came over here again, right? Setting powerful intentions, aligning your intentions is what we call a sankalp. So when you are determined, when you're like, I'm going to do this, you take a sankalp, you're like, I'm going to do this. This is my intention. I'm going to set it. And the universe is going to help me embark or, you know, really manifest that goal into reality. Right. The union of the mind and the universe is not something that has been, you know, just brought it has been here for years and years and years. Your power holds tremendous power. If you are able to alter the frequencies of your mind, if you are able to tap into different dimensions of consciousness, you will be able to materialize the desires from other dimensions into this reality. This is why when you begin to really work on manifestation we say that oh no when you manifest in 4d it is a lot more easier because in 4d we don't have attachment we don't have this ego ego is not bad understand that ego is not bad ego is our identity that we need in this reality right i need my identity i'm anaha i need that identity with me you cannot have a complete identity loss in this reality. In other realities, yes. Over here, you need it. So you integrate that ego. You work with the laws of the universe. Be it the principles, the seven key principles in hermitism. Be it the laws of the universe. Whatever you want to name it. Once you understand how the universe works. Once you're able to truly master that flow of the universe you're able to integrate your ego you are merging your 3d with 4d you are bridging that gap and that is what majority of the people miss now even in modern science right neuroplasticity is something that is also believed to enhance your manifestation right your brain basically rewires based on your thought patterns that are you know Proving thoughts that are shaping to reality, basically a perception. The way you perceive in spirituality, we say, or in manifestation, we say, this world is your mirror, right? We say that. The world is your mirror means I am seeing the world based on the perception of the reality that I've created in my head. And if that reality is not grounded, it can cause what we call as delusions in these days. Delusions is basically being disconnected from this reality. Not accepting. But if you really see acceptance is a neutral vibration. It's not good. It's not bad. It's just there. So understanding 
that when we change our perception of who we are, of the way we want to be perceived in the world, now that doesn't mean you change your entire, you know, appearance. Appearance can be a start. If you don't like the way you look, you have every right to change it. But you have no right to hate yourself for the way you look. Hate is different than wanting a change. The way you perceive yourself, that energy is going to be emitted. Right. In yogic philosophy, we have this thing called as koshas. I'm trying to summarize in bits and pieces. Understand that. In yogic philosophy, we have this thing called as koshas. Koshas are basically energy layers. Your physical body is connected to your mental, it's connected to your emotional, it's connected to your astral, it's connected to all the other bodies that you can't see. It's basically your entire aura. Right? So when one of these layers has some sort of change, it affects the other layers. When your physical body changes, it affects your mental and emotional. When your emotional and mental are affected, your physical is also responding to it. So that is enough proof for us to also know that our energy layers are responding to the surroundings. The energy that you give out can either influence it or you can allow the external to influence you. This is where the entire understanding of don't let the 3D affect you came from. What they were trying to say is don't react, learn how to respond. When you learn to respond to your external, your reactions slow down and it's not easy. Because for that, heavy emotional regulation is needed. A lot of people are disconnected from their mind, from their emotions. Emotional avoidance is not detachment. Detachment is knowing how you feel. Sometimes you have to cry, you have to release, you have to use those emotions to transmute. Emotions amplify your intentions. Whatever your intention is, it amplifies it. A lot of mind training, a lot of emotional regulation can actually help you with it. Because, again, in yogic philosophy, now the way our bodies are very much connected to the external, right? Our nervous system is connected to what we call as energy channels. We can call them as nadis, right? Nadis are energy channels in Sanskrit, is what I was taught, right? Nadis are energy channels. And because these energy channels, again, help you connect to the universal energy, so the prana that we talk about, the prana is present in these energy channels. When you strengthen your prana, all these inner blockages that we call, that we call as re resistance. Resistance is nothing other than a blockage, right? When the prana increases in the body, it is so intelligent because that prana is connected to the universal energy. That prana is connected to the universal energy. The universal energy is far more intelligent than we will actually ever be. And we need to accept that at some point. That intelligent energy, when it begins to flow through us, we call, as, we call it as this inner knowing. Some call it as intuition. Some call it as inner knowing. Some call it as listening to the heart. When that prana increases, your internal knowing, your body begins to respond to the external. Do I need this? No, I really don't need this. If someone is making you feel a certain way, your body will respond to it. It's not reacting, it's responding. That is how intelligent your system is. That is how connected you are to the universe. So when you really begin to understand manifestation, it's not a... Oh, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to visualize, I'm going to chant a few mantras that I don't know if I should actually chant or no, because I don't know what is going to happen if I don't have guidance and I go forward with it. It's not just that. It is you really mastering your mind first. Training the mind, training your emotions, training your body. And body training doesn't mean physical. It also means your metabolism. It also means what you're eating, what you're consuming matters. Start being mindful of what you're consuming. And it doesn't mean neglect your reality. 
Manifestation is not about neglecting. It is learning how to respond to reality. If someone is suffering and it is in your power to help you, for example, if you are suffering, right? I see you suffering and I have all the power in me to help you, but I choose not to help you. That is me responding to it. But if I choose to help you, that is also me responding to it. So that decision is in our hands. Our ability to listen to our inner knowing and respond to the external is aligned action. So you know when we say, oh, cleanse, let go, set intention, take aligned action, that's what they mean. It is a lot more deeper. So the origins of manifestation are not surface level love. They go a lot more deeper. It is you integrating the 3D with the 4D and all other dimensions to ever exist. Because all dimensions actually exist within you. This is why, you know, after a level in meditation, they start to say, you are not your mind, you are not your body. Because your mind, your body, your emotions are an aspect of you. They are not completely you which doesn't give you permission to invalidate yourself, but rather you learn to use these tools given to you. Right, your body is a beautiful vessel. If you don't know how to use it, of course you are not, you're gonna be like, okay, why should I care about it? No one has taught us how to use our body. No one has taught us how to use our emotions. No one has taught us how to use our mind, right? So we're getting out of an age of suppression to expression where we allow ourselves to express and during this expression we are embodying, integrating it and merging all realities within us. So understand that manifestation is not new age. It has been around for a very long time, honey. And that is why I've started this series. This is like an introduction. But eventually, as you know, weeks go by, I'm gonna be getting a bit more deeper into certain concepts like, you know, hermitism, what are the seven principles? How does it work? Because it's not as easy as people think. So Let's make a promise today together. We're not going to be harsh on ourselves mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. If we can't do certain things, it's okay. Because sometimes when we give up, I'm talking, when I talk about giving up, I'm talking about surrender, surrendering. I'm talking about letting go of all control. The universe is like, now you're letting me do the work. So, yeah, for those who say that manifestation is new age, it's not. It's been in a lot of cultures, you name it. You call it prayer, you call it witchcraft, whatever you want to call it.